कैबिनेट में मेरा वरिष्ठ कुलीग श्री धर्मेंद्र प्रधान जी और एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट से संबंधित अधिकारीगण पोस्टल डिपार्टमेंट के उड़ीसा के पोस्टमास्टर जनरल और भुवनेश्वर और अन्य भागों से आए हुए उड़ीसा के वरिष्ठ नागरिक थिंकर्स लीडर्स इन द सोसाइटी पुनः आप सबको धन्यवाद नमस्कार बिकॉज इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड माय अक्वायर्ड नॉलेज ऑफ हिंदी वुडन बी एडिक्वेट टू से व्हाट आई वांट टू से पार्डन मी आई विल स्पीक इन इंग्लिश द न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इज अ वेरी प्रोग्रेसिव पॉलिसी it's a result of so many so many different people putting their minds together and extensive consultation i am not sure if there is any policy made in any country which has gone through such rigorous consultation as the nep and even after it was put in public domain the inputs which have come have been gone through with similar rigor and the policy has been fine tuned polished refined and we have a excellent policy in front of us a singular feature of that policy is that it is a flexible policy it's not something which delhi decides and imposes on all the states it's a broad framework and then the states are left to adapt it according to their requirements and that's where the language and its emphasis comes into play india has always had this grievance that at the cost of building knowledge in english or proficiency in english are we reaching a stage where we are forgetting our mother tongues we reach that stage a lot of discussion happens on that and uh, there has always been this question of three language po policy whilst most indian states have agreed to implement three language policy there are some which don't want a third language so that is one side of the story but if a state has understood the importance of teaching in mother tongue there are some communities within this country if i have understood uh, right the discussions which have been on um, the fact that orissa was probably the first linguistic state now if that is the principle with which many more linguistic states were formed you would presume that in those states the respective mother tongues would be given emphasis and i think largely that is what is happening however those who speak about the diversity of this country forget that even among the 18 scheduled languages within that you have several dialects which don't naturally because they are dialects don't have a script of their own but yet communities depend on the rich inherited uh, benefits they have because of the language in which they speak it may be a dialect but it still brings in a rich heritage now if we were to look at it therefore from the point of view of states linguist linguistically divided states promoting a particular language then it's also a question of are there other languages within that state which also need great emphasis and that is why today the um, effort made by the education particularly the ncrt to get primary books for promotion of those dialects which need to be cultivated now i can take only general examples of language mother tongues which give us a richness a richness and also connect with the nature with which each of these environments live 
For instance, a person with Rajasthani as his language and the background with which Rajasthan uh, is ordained or given its natural topography will have its own richness in its language as compared to, let's say, states like Orissa, states like Andhra Pradesh, and states like Tamil Nadu, which are on the coastal region with a lot of uh, the sea and also rivers which are flowing into the sea. Why, why is this important? It is because the kind of idioms, the kind of expressions that you use, the kind of comparisons that you can make are all derived from nature-driven examples. So a, a, a Rajasthani language would have so much for the desert, whereas we in the coastal states would have so much for the sea. Colors and smell, if you have to explain to a child, are derived from local examples. And therefore, it is important to have that rootedness, that connectedness to the nature, which is what we live with every day. And that gets passed through the filter of language. So the richness of thought really is strengthened by the mother tongue acquired from home, from school, and from your environment itself. And that's where the language and the need to have books which showcase the language and its own culture is important to start from school till such a time the child becomes a little young adult where other languages can be acquired. There's one just more, one more point that I would add here as a thought, uh, which is not certainly a judgment that I like to bring in, but a thought. And I'm sure many of you all will agree with me when I say, Someone who learns his mother tongue, someone who speaks in his mother tongue, someone who thinks in his mother tongue, has a clarity of thought, which can later be passed on to the other languages which he learns, whereas you would confuse the children if you were to have a, a, a different language, even at the stage where the child's mind is very curious. He wants to know, he or she wants to know so many things at so many times, even within that childhood. And it is established scientifically that from the age where the child starts observing things, smelling things, starts hearing the language from a mother, the mind is active of that little toddler. And it is then that he absorbs the maximum. And because the child absorbs the maximum at that stage, the versatility with which he can communicate, talk, express, all become very rich. Now, if at that stage the child's environment is different from the language in which he is expected to read or speak, that's where the clash in his mind starts. And that is why learning in mother tongue is absolutely important. And even a dialect being a mother tongue should not deny the children the ability to read and write in it. And therefore, this effort of the education ministry, the drive given by Dharmendra Pradhanji to make sure tribal children don't suffer in this country. And that is where bringing these primers for those dialects in the native language here, in the script of the native language here, Odia for instance here, is a very, very useful and a generation-making step. It's not just for one or two days or year when the child goes to the school. It is going to build generations who feel proud, confident, and enriched by their own language or a dialect. Now it won't long, any longer be a dialect. It has a script, and that is the Uriya script. So I once again wish the NCRT, the minister, for having pushed through this uh, great reformatory step. And that is the biggest has said in, uh, when PM talks about Ek Bharat, Sreshta Bharat. All of us are actually 
all of us are actually equally contributing to the richness of this country. And this is one step to enrich it even more. Thank you very much.